Hello there, everybody, and welcome to this feature presentation on YouTube. I am King Mac, your hamburger pal. Thank you all for watching. Be sure to enjoy a hot, fresh cheeseburger along with some delicious golden french fries, a tasty milkshake, and a nice soft drink. Also, be sure to grab some hot buttery popcorn while you're at it as you enjoy this episode of TT Burger Game Reviews on YouTube. Hello everybody! You're watching TT Burger Game Reviews here on YouTube and I'm your host Tony bringing you more PS1, PS2, PS3, and PS4 games here to talk about as we, as we are back here with another PlayStation review here, episode 273, part 1 of one part once again. Before I get started, I want to give a shout out to everyone who has supported this channel from day one. For the last seven years here, we're going on, I'm, I'm, I'm seven years here since this channel was first created. And if you guys, the channel would not be as big as it is today. And from the bottom of my heart, I thank you all because the more you guys, the channel wouldn't be as big as today. And because you guys, the channel keeps growing bigger and bigger each day. But for today's episode here, we're going to talk about an arcade rail shooter featuring the band with Steven Tyler and Joe Perry, the band called a Aerosmith by the company The Claim and Midway Games and stuff. This game first start off in the arcade. We start that where it was three, it was up to three people. People can can can, can duke it out, and everything like that, killing the bad guys and, and getting to the end. And then it was ported to 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 the homebrew versions here, like the Super Nintendo, like the Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis, Sega 332X, PC, Sega Saturn, and PlayStation. There's also the Atari Jaguar version, which was canceled. And this game has Aerosmith in it. And if you like Aerosmith, then we'll stay tuned here because we got Revolution X. Featuring the band Aerosmith, which was released in 1996. I looked at the PlayStation version, the only version I have, so I can say as much as I can for the other versions, but this is the version we're going to be looking at here. Now, I will say, I love the band Aerosmith. They're one of my favorite bands of all time. And you think putting them in a video game would be awesome, right? Well, Revolution X is not a good game. Sure, light gun and rail shooters can be enjoyable, but this one, not so much because it is too easy and short and lacks the challenge factor of games such as Starblade Alpha and Time Crisis and more. I mean, Aerosmith fans will be happy to have Aerosmith stuff in the game, but it does not change the fact that, that the game is boring and too easy and there are better games out there. The PlayStation version, in my opinion, is the best of the home port, but even that is saying much. The arcade version was awesome, the three people duke it out, stopping the New Order Nation and rescuing Aerosmith and the rest of the world was fun, and ha had blood and stuff too, like, like, like Mortal Kombat and stuff. But the home ports were butchered and left those gamers scratching their heads wondering, how was this possible? Well, we need to continue. The story takes place in 1996 where you are in Los Angeles, California, waiting, 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 waiting to go see Aerosmith at, at, the, at the Revolution Lucian concert and stuff like that, and you get the backstage passes when help breaks loose. The New Order Nation, led by Lady Helga, a vampire-looking girl who was portrayed by Carrie Hoskins, who, who was who portrayed Slinger Blade Mortal Kombat 3, where they are attacking the world where they have banned music, televisions, concerts, movies, video games, and more. And you arrive at Club X, seeing it overrun by the New Order Nation, and they have captured Errol Smith. You get a message from Steven Tyler, the lead singer, and he tells you, if you're watching this, then you know what is going on. It's up to you now. Find our car and stop the New Order. And then you, he gives you the keys to the car, and then you go from there. The story I actually liked, it's not to take stick seriously, but still works, especially Aerosmith in it. How could you go wrong there? The presentation of Revolution X is digitized and two-dimensional like, like most men may have claimed games back then, and it, looks, and, it, and it looks good. The explosions, the blood, and the way Aerosmith looks is awesome. The backgrounds look cool as well, but, but and well digitized, and really well in Los Angeles, in the Middle East, in the baseball stadium, and more. But there are things that have been censorship done to the ports, and they look a lot, and, and they took out a lot, a lot of the blood and other things too. And also there are there are, there are a couple slowdowns here, and the frame doesn't hold the best in any of the ports here. And there's some slowdowns here, and it's a little worse in the 16-bit ports, such as the uh, such as Super Nintendo and Genesis and stuff. And because of the quality of the home ports, the graphics are grainy and blurry at times too, is the thing. I love the sound of Revolution X. I love the rock and roll tunes by Aerosmith and other rock and tunes with no lyrics made for the game as well. 
It is also very cool seeing the band members members of Aerosmith talk to you, which was something that was never done before. Even Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis ports have voice acting in them too, which was a rare thing at the time, and they even have 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 some of the Aerosmith songs in there too. But the sound in those versions, the 16-bit versions, are washed out and awful. The Sega Star and PlayStation PC versions have the best audio due to them being CD-based. The weapons sound cool, and the grunts from the New Order sound awesome and more. And there's some Aerosmith songs in here too, but you only hear snippets of the songs too and stuff. It's like it's like it repeats a part of the, the same clip of the song over and over when you hear them playing, which makes which they could include the whole song and stuff. That, that's just me. But let's continue. The gameplay of Revolution X featuring Aerosmith can be fun, but all the problem annoyances are what hamper the game. For starters, this, this is a light gun rail shooter with, with with no support for a light gun controller where you can only play this controller to control, which I do not mind, but I can see why a lot of people would not like it. And basically your goal is to stop the New Order Nation, rescue Aerosmith, and take out Lady Helga, and save the world. That is your basic goal. You use your machine gun, killing killing the enemies while getting powerful along the way and getting seeds, which are secondary weapons which are like missiles and stuff, and they explode. And you will fight through six stages to get a high score while completing objectives to win and beat the game. Along the way, you will have boss fights, which can be a challenge. You, you can interact with objects in the environment and destroy and rescue hostages and find other hidden secrets and other surprises and more. But here's the problem. There is no variety to any of the levels, like Time Crisis and Starbit Alpha, which gave you different types of objectives that alter the gameplay. Here all you do is shoot, 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 and shoot away, be in the game, and call it a day. The game is not long, you'll be able to finish it in, in under an hour and walk, through, and the game is really easy to do with 20 lives, no time limit either, it makes the game a cakewalk. Having Aerosmith in the game is awesome, but there could have been more Aerosmith Smith that was in there and stuff. Imagine the Bammer is fighting alongside your soul, that would have been awesome, but, but not really much though. And there's only four Aerosmith songs, Dude Looks Like a Lady, Eat the Rich, Ragdoll, Love in an Elevator, and there are portions of songs that did not play them in full. Now, I didn't mention, mention the voice setting, I have to mention there that the voice setting is good. I mean, a little hokey and stuff, but it's, not, but it's nice to see Aerosmith do voice acting for a game and stuff too, because they're, they're pretty good. And especially Lady Helga, voiced by Carrie Haskins, who did Sonya in, in Mortal Kombat 3. Once you beat the game, you get the score, you can put the game away and go on to something else, and that is... Revolution X featuring Aerosmith, that's all I gotta say about it. It could have been a lot better and stuff like that because there, 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 there's so much, so much, much that could have been done and just really, really, really hammers and stuff. I'm gonna be giving this game a low score here, my final thoughts here. The score given is a 3 out of 10, it's the best score I can give it. So, those of you who do like Aerosmith, just go watch a documentary. Go to Dinheim Studios Rock and Roll Coaster starring Aerosmith with that, with that ride there too. Or just play, just go listen to their CDs or watch the music videos like that and. If you need some Aerosmith fix, I could recommend it, but that's all. But that's pretty much all I got to say in there. Stay tuned for episode 274. We'll be looking at an another uh, another game here. We'll be covering your final that. All I can say is Tony Peace and out. Have a great day. See you all in my next review. And avoid this game. Take care, everybody. <laughs>